2019 was a fairly big year for me on graphs. The video is going to be focused on showing you updates on all the graphs that I did. Uh, the majority of the graphs I'm going to show you are fig, rather than continually put in-ground trees that take water, food, pruning, all of the maintenance. I find it is a lot better to have, you know, one robust, or a few in my case, robust trees and graft onto them heavily. Uh, figs are very easy to propagate via grafting. I'm also going to show you some more grafts that I put on. I put on some Asian pear grafts, peach grafts, um, I did some loquat grafts. So we're going to just check to see how they're doing. All of these grafts were put on late February to early March. That's around the time to do it. You want to graft right at bud break or just before. That's when sap is flowing. And then around now, late March to early April, you should start to see your grafts break bud. All right, let's start out with this dwarf everbearing mulberry. You can see it's shot up with growth right now. Um, down in here, I have a sweet lavender graft. This is the cleft graft I did. And it shot up about a foot of growth at this point. One thing to be mindful of is your rootstock is going to try to favor its own growth and push its own stalks up. If you want your graft to really push more growth, um, you might have to rub some of those rootstock branches off just to help to promote that. Over here is another pair of cleft grafts that I did, Black Beauty. Um, you can see both grafts took. And then buried in here, That is a Reinbart graft that I did, Silk Hope. And this stock is actually from that graft. So it's put about an 18 inch branch on from that original scion. Let's look at the yellow long neck. So I did this as a Reinbart graft in the video. And you can see um, this Figo Prado that I grafted on has taken and thrived pretty well on this tree. And I also attempted a chip bud down here of Smith. That one did not take. The nice thing about the chip bud is if it doesn't take, it doesn't ruin the tree. It'll grow back pretty well. So. Rainbark graft, I really like. It's a very successful type of graft um, to do. Here's another graft that I did last year. Um, this is a Tina fig. And show you where the graft union is. It's right here. This is using the tool. You can see it was a saddle graft. This is a Toro fig. And it's doing quite well. And this is the first time that it's fruited for okay, me. I'm going to jump behind my white sapote. Right back here, that's a Vernon graft that I did. And this one here is also pushing growth. That is a netty white. Okay, in front is an LSU champagne fig. I don't care for this fig. I don't think that it does very well in our desert climate but it is a very vigorous grower. So completely top work this. This graft is a bass's favorite fig. This is another bass's favorite. This one's a little slower to push growth, but the bud you can see is green and is close to pushing. Here I've got a Martinenka 
Ramada. And this one may have dried out. This is why I like long scions, because I can get two graphs out of each scion. It just ensures that if for some reason your graph doesn't take, you've got another one to fall back on. This is a Hativ de Argentile. This one's doing quite well. This graft here is a Figo Prado. This graft here is the other piece of the Martinenka Ramada. And you can see this one took just fine. Over here is a Black Madeira. And then this is another Hativ d'Argentile. Back here is an LSU Scots Black in-ground tree. I've got a few graphs on here. I have a Col de Dom Blanc, which is taken. Up here, I have a graft of Vasilika Sika. This is Vasile. Back here, I have another Col de Dom Blanc. I have not seen it push yet, but the buds look like they're healthy. It's just a little later, maybe because it's more in shade. Don't freak out if your, your grafts don't take right away. Give them a chance. Okay, this is my Texas Everbearing, and I pretty much grafted onto every branch. And just an interesting note, too, this is a graft that I did last year. This is a Galicia Negra. And for the first time, I've got um, fruit coming in on that, so that's exciting. And all my fig grafts on in-ground trees are pretty much the saddle graft. It's a very easy method. This is Smith. This one here is the UCR 184.15. It's also known as Strawberry Teardrop. This is another graft of the uh, Strawberry Teardrop. Wow, these are massive leaves. This is a graft of Adriatic JH. This is another graft Put on a lot of growth, Adriatic JH. Over here we've got the Socorro Black. Here's another Smith. Over here is a Genovese Nero AF. This is another Agena VC Nero AF. Over here we've got another Figo Prado. This right here is the Bordesat Blanca Negra. It's pushed a fig, but no leaves at this point. This Black Madeira is Not yet breaking bud, may or may not, so I'm giving that one a chance. Here we have a Col de Dom Noir. The buds look prime to push some growth, but have not yet. Down here is a red Lebanese, Becca Valley. And the scion was so thick that I couldn't do a saddle graft with the tool, so I ended up doing a cleft graft on this one, and that has taken. This is a graft I did last year. This is a Macedonian dark. Over here is another Socorro black. These two branches, this one 
and this one are both the same variety. This is Del Son Schwam Gran. Do not know if I said that right. And then on the very top here, we've got a pair of Bordesat Blanca Negra figs. Over here is a Col de Dom Noir in Ground Tree. Um, just because I had quite a few mix-ups from the seller, I want to ensure that this was true to type. So I grafted on another Col de Dom Noir on this side. This will be interesting to compare fruit this year. Um, my in-ground tree is finally pushing figs on this, so I'll be able to hopefully do that comparison. Here's the Christmas loquat that I did uh, last year. This is on my Smyrna quince. So just kind of cool to see a loquat coming out of a quince tree, but they are compatible. Uh, this has not fruited yet, but probably this year it'll set some fruit. Over here is an LSU purple. I've got a Col de Dom Gris that may have dried out. Looks like it was pushing a bud and then that dried. Down here, it looks like I've got another Figo Prado. Up here is a Cochiel Verdial, and I'm not really sure what's happening with this graft. It's got like almost signs that it's pushing little roots out. It's very odd. We got some mixed results on this tree. Over here is the Red Lebanese. Becca Valley, another one of those. You can see this one's just starting to break bud. Some leaves coming out. Down here is uh, Sucrete. Over here is my green Greek in-ground fig tree. I have an unknown Pustillier. Also on my green Greek, I've got a couple of chip buds and I'm not sure if they're gonna take, um, but these are the Sanguinados. And again, the Scion was so large that a chip bud was really the only thing that I could try to do. So nothing has shown at this point, but we'll see. Over here is my Nordland in-ground tree, and I've got a graft of Vasilika Sika Belclair. Over here is my LSU Scott's yellow in-ground tree, and I have a graft, another graft of Cochio Verdiel, and this one took just fine. Over here is a graft of Col de Dom Gris, this is the Atriano in-ground fig tree. I have a graft of the Italian 258. Uh, bud is engorged, but has not pushed yet. And then back here, this is an unknown dark Greek Navid, just starting to push. This is my in-ground Violet de Bordeaux. And last year, I did a saddle graft of Adriatic. This is not the JH variety. This is just a generic Adriatic. And I did not get fruit last year, but it looks very robust with growth now. This is all the graft coming out. This is the Olympian in-ground fig. And I've got a graft here of Violet Sapor. Now this is a single node graft. Unfortunately, this was a very small scion, so we'll see if this breaks bud or not. So far, no activity. Over here is my LSU Tiger. I've got a Fico Bronco. It doesn't appear to have done anything thus far. It's another single node graft. 
Up top here is a Violet Sapor Scion. And this was not a very good quality Scion. Um, very scrawny. It was difficult to graph this. And you can see, I mean, just the shape of it. Odd. So we'll see on this. It may have dried out. Over here is a Pingo de Mel. This is another Figo Bronco. Again, no activity. I um, believe this is the one Scion that was very dried out um, on arrival. If you have a dry Scion, your chances of it taking are pretty slim. But we'll see. In front is a Wuhan fig in the ground. I have a few graphs on here. This is a Sangua Dolce. And then down here, I've got a Pingo de Mel. I also have a Sangua Dolce up here, but it doesn't appear to be a viable bud. So thankfully I was able to get two scions out of that one. Similar to the Texas Everbearing, uh, my Black Mission is a fairly sizable tree. It's been in the ground for three years and I've done a lot of grafts on this tree because it can take it. It's got a pretty massive root system at this point. So starting out, this is the Long Dute. Down here we've got a Gris Olivette. Looks like it is slightly dried on this bud. Another Long Dute. Another Gris Olivette. That. Now this gray Olivet looks like it's got a bud that's starting to push. Over here is another Vasilika Sika Belclair. Over here we've got a Black Provence. Over here is a Genovese Nero AF that has not broken bud, or is the ones on the other tree did. This was a graft I did last year of the Black Greek Marius, one of my favorite fig varieties. So all of this is from the graft. This is a Coldadama Blanca Negra. This is another Black Greek graft that I did last year. Here we've got a fig that's variety that's known to be very finicky. This is the Black Ischia. UC Davis um, can be very difficult to root this. So most people say the only way to really propagate this is to graft it, at least with high success. Here I've got another Black Provence. The buds have swollen, but not broken at this point. This is a graft I did last year of Figo Prado. This is another graft of Figo Prado that I did last year. And an Italian 258 graft that I did last year. This right here is a UCR 187.25. And you can see just the very first signal that it's starting to break bud. Over here is a Grow Monstrous de Lapari. Um, it's actually pushing a fig. No leaves at this point. Down here is another UCR 187.25. Over here is a Toro graph that I did last year. 
And this massive fig on here is from that graft. This is the first time it's fruiting for me. This right here is a white Azores. This here is a Motoso Prado. No activity yet. This kind of odd shapen scion is a Pontetressa. Another Gros Monstrous de Lapari has not broken bud yet. Another White Azores. Another Motoso Prado. And right at the very top, you can see the bud is starting to emerge. Here we have another Black Askia. And finally, this is a yellow long neck. So just for fun, in front here is an all-in-one almond. My in-ground tree of three years. Because you can graft peaches onto almonds, I thought, why not? Let's try it. So I don't know that this is the best choice here. This is actually a, requires more chill hours than we really get. This is an early Red Haven peach, but you can see it took. Over here is my Che berry. I had a female Che, but was skeptical that it was a self-fertile variety since I've never gotten fruit off of it. So I've grafted on self-fruitful Che. So I went ahead and did a dual rind bark graft here. And you can see they've taken nicely. So this should now have what it needs to set fruit. Over here is a black askia fig tree in ground. Up top here, this one's really taken off. This is a Coldadama gregantina. This right here is a sucret. This is another Coldadama gregantina. And this right here that is just starting to push is an unknown dark Greek Navid. All right, here's my Hollywood plum tree in ground. So I've also done quite a few plum grafts. Okay, these are Satsuma grafts. Um, this was done last year. The Satsuma plum did not fruit for me this year. Down at the bottom here, I put a, a blue damson plum on this year, and you can see that it's taken. Um, over here is a methley plum graft that I did last year. It too did not fruit for me. I think this was caught just in a bad time with the late frost. Here we've got a pair of shiro plums that I did this year. And it looks like they started to push something and then stopped dried out, so um, time will tell on this one. And then up here I've got another uh, blue damson that has not broken bud yet. I've got one more graft down here that I did actually last year and you can see it's still dormant. It's very much alive, campium is green, but this green gauge has not woken up yet. And we're headed into very warm temperatures soon, so Kind of odd. In front is an Arbicana olive. It's a black olive. I failed at grafting this tree last year, um, but tried a rind bark graft this time for that extra cambium contact, hoping that would do the trick, and was successful at grafting this pair of scions from a container plant of a manzanilla, which is a green type of olive. So this tree will be able to produce both black and green okay, olives. This is the raspberry latte fig. And last year, I had put on a Col de Dom Gris. Really didn't do much, but this year it's um, shot up growth. And it did set a fig already. So I'll get to try this one, hopefully. 
Over here is a Violet de Bordeaux fig. I grafted a lemon blanche or a blanquette, depending what you want to call it. Um, I grafted that last year. So all of this is that growth. So be able to have uh, more figs off of this variety this year. This is my Excel fig. And I do have just a couple of Toro grafts that I did last year. So again, saddle, saddle graft. There's one and this is the other right here. In front here is a 20th century Asian pear. Um, this one I did go a little crazy grafting on. So this year I've added, this one is the Ichiban Nashi. You can see here's the graft union. So this foliage up top all sprung out. Um, down here is a Korean giant. You can see the foliage here. It's from that graft. Here's another of the uh, Korean giant that took. Here I've got a Tennessee. This one here is a Yoanashi that has taken. And we'll spin around here. Got some more on this side. So this is another Tennessee. You can see this long branch shot up from that. Um, let's see what we've got here. I've also got an Ichiban Nashi. So all of this foliage has sprung from that graft. And then, oh, look at that. I already got a pear forming. So this was a graft I did last year. So this is a Hosui. So all this foliage here. And then down here is another graft I did last year. This is the Shinseki. So I don't know how many, I have like eight varieties, I think, on this pear tree. Um, Asian pear is very easy to graft. Oh, and I missed one. Here's another Shinko. That's taken. Over here is a Kidota tree in the ground. And this is a graft that I did last year in 2018. This is a Bordesat Blancanegra. And I want to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the two fig sellers, because this one here I got from C. Willis in Florida. It was one of two scions that I grafted in 2018 that took out of the dozen or so that I bought. Um, just break down the two sellers for you. And this is my experience, my personal experience. Um, you know, I encourage you to buy from both and find out for yourself. But from my experience, what I've seen from C. Willis is dried out cuttings from him in 2019. So that Figo Bronco, the, the two that haven't taken, I don't expect that they will. The, uh, the wood, when I impact them in January, um, the wood was actually coming off. It was rot, essentially. So I have a feeling that maybe he stores his cuttings, he doesn't cut them fresh, or perhaps it's just so wet in Florida that the trees, the wood is just rot a lot of times, I'm not sure. Um, on the other hand, Harvey is very fresh. Um, the cuttings that you get from him, you know, you, you cut them open and you can see nice healthy green cambium. They are not dried out and they're packaged properly so they don't rot in their packaging. Um, they're done in saran wrap. Um, I do find Willis to be a little bit higher priced than Harvey. So you gotta look at cost as well. Um, also in terms of the quality, um, you get an eight to nine inch cutting with Harvey, uh, oftentimes with six nodes or more, 
With Sea Willis, you'll get a five inch cutting most often um, with three nodes on average. Um, so sometimes all you get is node, really, because depending on where those nodes fall, if they're at the very end of the branch, that's not really going to be suitable. One thing I will say for Sea Willis is you can see there's absolutely no sign of FMV, the fig mosaic virus, on this particular graft. With Harvey, you do see signs of fig mosaic virus. Uh, it's not really a concern for us here in Arizona. Our trees grow so robustly that that virus doesn't hold them back in fruit production. They're rock stars here. So if you're in the cold climate, then yeah, you might have a concern with that. The last thing is the fruiting. So this was grafted actually before the scions I got from Harvey were grafted in 2018 and this did not produce any fruit. The Galicia Negra also did not produce any fruit. Now, Harvey's did. Not on every single variety, but more of them did. And I'm not saying that that's a quality issue, but it's more on the environment. If you think about it, California is much more um, equivalent to Phoenix than Florida would be. And it's not having to adapt. So I think that potentially is why I get fruit off of the Harvey Scions faster than I will off the Willis ones. I think that if you have the opportunity to buy Scions from a seller that's growing figs in your climate, do it because that way your fig is gonna have to adjust. So. I will be doing Scions again next January. I'll try to do that every year if I have time. Um, so if you're in the Arizona area, it's probably a better bet to buy a Scion from me where you know it's true to type. It's done well. The mother tree, you know, you can see videos, you can see tastings, you know what to expect. You're gonna have better success than buying it from, you know, someplace in New York. In front is the wonderful pomegranate I put in five years ago. Um, I did do some grafts last year. This is a pera fianca. You can see it's pretty gnarly the way that it's knotted up at the graft union, but those were both Rhinebark approach grafts, a dual. So pomegranate is another easy one to graft. Here's another pair. Right here, Rheinbark approach. This is the Purple Heart. They've really taken off. And over here is another pair of Fianca I did. Another Rheinbark approach. These two on either side. So I should get pomegranates from these varieties now that it's been a year. We'll see. All right, so this is my Champagne Loquat. I bought it not knowing that it was potentially self infertile. I don't think that it's self infertile. I just think that it doesn't produce a whole lot of fruit set on its own. So if you're gonna go with Champagne, definitely recommend grafting so that you get more cross-pollination and higher fruit yields. Um, I'm trying down here, Orange Dream. This one has not broken bud yet. This is a big gem. And these are uh, veneer approach grafts. So a little different style. Loquat's pretty easy to graft. Very soft and veneer grafts work out pretty well. Because it's so soft, you don't want to use a saddle graft, it'll crush, just crush that scion. Up here is a Christmas graft that I did last year. And what's very cool is this year I got some fruit off of it. This single little branch. 
I had a make beth in the ground and it was starting to decline, so I took a branch off of it and grafted this two years ago. It has not done a whole lot. The grafts took. This was actually a cleft graft that I did. So this is the Macbeth. Has not even attempted to flower yet. So I'm trying to get as many varieties of loquat as I can on this. And then over here, I've got three more orange dream grafts. As you can see, these are starting to pop through the parafilm. So these look successful. See where the last one is. This one you can see for sure the leaves coming out. If you're interested to find out where I got my scion wood from, I've got all of what I'm growing in the yard itemized in a spreadsheet. Um, check the link in the about area. You can view where I bought the scion from. Not just scions, but all my in ground trees as well. All right, we've come to the last tree that I've grafted. Rootstock is a Florida Prince peach tree. Um, I put these grafts on last year. These are gold mine nectarine grafts. You can see they're in a different stage than the Florida Prince. Florida Prince is, you know, set fruit and they're growing, getting some size. But these are just now in bloom. So that's the benefit too of grafting. Not only do you get more varieties, but you get um, fruit ripening at different times. So you have a larger season. You can extend it. So I did do a graft on this tree this year. This is a Stark or Donut Peach. You can see how tiny the scion is. Very small. It's kind of difficult to graft this. It has not pushed any growth yet. I'm not gonna freak out yet. Again, these things sometimes can, can be dormant for a while. So that was a lot of uh, graphs to take a look at. Clearly I've done a lot more of that this year. Um, I did pretty much go in all in on fig varieties. I'm not gonna keep all those graphs. So what I'm doing is I'm trialing fruit that's one way to do it. Instead of investing in an in-ground tree, you know, putting all this work into it and then not liking the fruit or finding that it doesn't do well in our climate, grafting is kind of a, a nice solution. It's a temporary thing. You know, you just need a viable branch to put that scion on. See how it does. I don't expect all those fig varieties. I mean, some of them are from coastal climates and France and Italy and Portugal, are they going to thrive here in the Sonoran Desert? Potentially no. Maybe some of them will be a surprise and they will. But this is just to check to see what, what does well here, what tastes good. Um, once I find that out, I'll probably dwindle my collection from 74 to something like 20. What I'll do is I'll just continue to graph that, those, you know, top 20 varieties onto my trees. So just some tips today. Um, if you do have questions, let me know. I do my best to try to answer them. And as I mentioned, check out that, um, that link if you want to know where I'm sourcing my scion wood from. As always, thanks for watching and happy gardening.